This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In the first lecture, we were looking at ways of trying to measure the effect of uncertainty. We looked at sensitivity analysis and then a brief mention of Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, we now the other bit of numbers that could be relevant is the use of expected values. Expected values you should have heard of uh, already in other contexts, but here it's in the context of investment appraisal. So let me show you or remind you or whatever uh, with exercise two. Diger is considering launching a new product. It'll require additional capital investment at 200000 The selling price will be $10, and we've ascertained that the probability of a demand of 50,000 units is 0.5, but there's a probability it may be 20% higher, uh, 0.1 probability it'll be 20% lower. We expect to earn a contribution of 50%. We expect fixed overheads to increase by 140,000 a year. The time horizon is four years. It'll be sold at the end of four years at 50,000. So apart from one thing, this is a very simple, basic MPV question. We know the cost, 200. We know there'll be extra fixed overheads of 140. Last four years, sell for 50,000. The problem, though, is the contribution. It'll be 50% of revenue. But although we know what the selling price will be, $10, the demand is uncertain. The demand might be 50,000, it might be higher, it might be lower. Well, the expected value way of doing it, since we know what the various possible demands are and the probabilities, we'll base our decision, we'll base our workings on the expected or average demand and therefore revenue and therefore contribution. So what's the average demand going to be? And then we can do it as normal. It says the demand, it's either going to be 50,000 units with a probability of 0.5, or well, there's a probability 0.4, it'll be 20% higher. Well, 20% of 50 is 10, so the demand might be 60,000 with a probability 0.4. Or it may be 20% lower. 20% lower than 50 is 1040. Probability 0.1. So it identified three possible levels. We know the probabilities. And so the average, the weighted average demand multiplied by the present uh, by the probabilities. And what do we get? Uh, 49, I think 53,000. That's the weighted average or the expected value. Expected value of 53,000. And now we can ignore all, all those different possibilities. Uh, we'll base our arithmetic, our calculation, as though we were selling 53,000. So it now becomes a normal question. The original cost times zero, 200,000. Um, the contribution, the contribution each, uh, well, sorry, the time horizon is four years, so the contribution will last for four years, and the contribution each year, we expect to be 50% of the revenue the revenue will be 53,000 units, the average demand, the expected demand, uh, at a selling price of $10. So 
So we expect to get revenue at 5.30. Contribution, 50% of that, 265,000 per annum. Uh, there's also extra fixed overheads of 140 a year. And in four years' time, we sell it to scrap value for 50,000. And all right, I will discount that we shouldn't, I shouldn't really need to, to be honest. We've done it enough times. But if I find my tables, the, uh, the cost of capital here is 20%. So 200 times zero is 200. Now the four year annuity factor at 20% is 2.589. So the present value of the contribution is 686,085 and the present value of the fixed overhead, 140 a year Three sixty-two four sixty, and finally the present value of the scrap, the ordinary discount factor at twenty percent for four years is point four eight two. And so what does that come to? Twenty-four thousand one hundred. The MPV. I think is right, 147725. I said MPV, it's the expected MPV. Uh, the problem being, that, uh, and a huge problem, the actual MPV will not be that at all because the demand won't be 53,000. The demand might be uh, 50,000 which would make the MPV a bit smaller. It might be 60,000, which would make the MPV higher. It might be 40,000, which makes it smaller still. So it is really only an average. Uh, but that's really the only way we can cope with it. Um, when we've got the various outcomes and other probabilities. Part B. Well, I'm sorry, I am not going to do in full. I really shouldn't need. It says here, assume the demand is certain at 50,000, in which case, if we're going to want the MPV, if the demand's certain at 50,000, the contribution will be 50% times 50,000 times $10. You know, it'll be 250,000 the discount away. But this time, the fixed overheads are uncertain. Uh, uh, in part A, we assume they were fixed at 140, but it now says that in fact, they might only be 100, they might be as much as 220. And so, all we do is say, well, what are the expected fixed overheads and use that? So 100, 140, 180. 220 to get the average or the expected you multiply by the probabilities hundred and forty times point three five hundred and eighty times point two five 220 times 0.2. So multiply by the probabilities and add them out. The total comes to 158,000. Well, there is the expected or average value. Uh, 
And again, I'm sorry, I am not going to discount. You can check the answer yourself at the back. But exactly like before, except, as I've already said, contribution, it says now the, uh, the demand is 50,000, therefore, contribution is 6,250. It's the fixed overheads now that are uncertain. And so instead of using 140, we would use 158. Discount as normal. The MPV would be different, but that would be expected MPV in that case. OK, uh, we're almost there, but to, uh, to give you a break, I'll stop there and then we'll have one last lecture going through the little bit that's left in this chapter.